We talk about B vitamins quite a bit, and B vitamins have this connotation uh, of being important for energy production. Let's move that out of the way here. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the primary functions of vitamin B6 beyond energy. So what we're looking at here in this diagram, you can see the functions of vitamin B6. Number one, it does help break down stored energy into glucose. And so remember that glucose is what we use to generate ATP, right? Which is what our body uses as kind of currency to perform its functions, right? To perform healing and repair and growth and metabolism. We got to get here. And vitamin B6 helps to break down stored energy into glucose. It also helps to regulate a process called endocytosis, um, which is important for immune function and it's important for cellular housekeeping. So think of this as the cell's ability to take out the garbage. We need vitamin B6 to be able to do that. Some people talk about you know, B vitamins and their importance in detoxification. This is one in partic particular that really helps. It also helps to turn folate on. Now, folate, many of you have talked about MTHFR. This is kind of a buzzword right now, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. And there's a gene pattern or a gene variant where people have problems metabolizing folate adequately. But one of the things that you want to understand about vitamin B6 is it actually helps to methylate folate. So when, when, when we eat dietary folate from things like greens, now, our body has to take that folate and it has to add a methyl group to it. Now, we won't get into the biochemistry of that, but that's what this M is for, is the methylation aspect. And so vitamin B6 helps to create active folate, right? Active versus non-active. So it helps to do that, and without that B6, it's very hard to come by. It prevents the buildup of homocysteine. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Produces immune signaling molecules that help regulate inflammation, but also that help in the production of antibodies. And it's also needed for healthy brain development. As a matter of fact, kind of an uh, interesting story is that the some of the original formulas that were produced for infants were found to be low in vitamin B6. And this led to many children developing seizure problems or epilepsy based problems and it was discovered after the fact that the formula was deficient in vitamin B6 and it was leading to that problem, leading to that seizure disorder. So we know that B6 is definitely necessary for not just brain development but also for function. And the brain can't properly function without neurochemicals and the brain can't properly produce those neurochemicals if you don't have adequate vitamin B6, which we'll also dive into. Let's talk a little bit about homocysteine. Homocysteine is one of these things, I've talked about this a number of times. The reason why I'm mentioning it today is because this is actually a lab test. So you can actually have your homocysteine, you can talk with your doctor and they can measure this compound. Now if you have elevations in homocysteine and really generally speaking, you want your homocysteine to be under nine. So when you go to the doctor and have it measured, you're looking for that value to be under nine. Now some of the labs are actually reporting that 14 plus is normal. 14 is kind of the lab's idea of saying since the population is so sick and so many people that we test have already too high levels of, of, of homocysteine, uh, they normalized it by increasing the reference range. But under 9 is where we want that homocysteine. So aside from that, what happens? Homocysteine has to be metabolized or broken down. Homocysteine is a toxic chemical and it's linked to heart disease. It's linked to clogging of the arteries, if you will. So a lot of doctors you know, demonize cholesterol for creating a clogging component to the arteries. But actually, homocysteine is what damages the vascular wall, creating the inflammation that's, that then subsequently leads to cholesterol forming the plaque. So if you didn't have the homocysteine damaging the wall, cholesterol wouldn't be a risk factor. This is actually a, a bigger risk factor and, and, and heart disease, but we also know that homocysteine can also contribute to kidney dysfunction. We know that uh, homocysteine can also cause neurological damage, nerve damage. We know that it's linked to cancer. This is why I like to talk about it, because heart disease, kidney disease, nerve damage, cancer, 
We also know that homocysteine has been, let's make some room here, has also been linked to um, bone loss. So if we look at all the different things, right, that this one molecule can create and wreak havoc on the body, right? These are all major conditions that doctors today in today's medical system treat on a regular basis using drugs, using chemicals to manipulate your biochemistry. Homocysteine is an independent risk factor for all of them. Now, wouldn't it go to say that if this is an independent risk factor for these diseases and these are some of the most common diseases that doctors treat, wouldn't it make sense that the doctor would measure homocysteine and then subsequently, if it's high, um, recommend a course of treatment to lower it. And then how do you lower homocysteine? Well, predominantly vitamin B6, um, as we said here, okay, vitamin B6 prevents the buildup of homocysteine, but so does folate. And vitamin B6 activates folate. So you need folate activated, and B6 does that. Homocysteine uh, in and of itself will elevate in an absence of folate and B6. And then there's a third B vitamin, which is vitamin B12. Uh, deficiency will also drive up your homocysteine levels. And then actually there's a fourth. We're talking about B vitamins. Vitamin B2 has also been shown to affect and impact homocysteine. So B2, B12, B6, and folate, all known to lower this chemical, which is an independent risk factor for all these major conditions. Now, what happens... Uh, let me let me move these out of the way for you. What happens here, homocysteine is like a, everybody produces it. So homocysteine in and of itself is not evil. Homocysteine, if it builds up to higher levels, can become toxic. But homocysteine by itself is not evil. Homocysteine converts to several different chemicals. One is methionine. Methionine is a very important amino acid that helps your body make new DNA and make new RNA for the healing and repair process. But homocysteine also produces the amino acid cysteine. And this is where vitamin B6 comes in. Vitamin B6 helps convert homocysteine into a chemical called cysteine. Now, if you've heard me talking at all about viruses and, and, and immune health, you've heard me talk about something called NAC, N-acetylcysteine, which is acetylated version of cysteine. And this nutrient, this amino acid, is super critical for immune function, and it's also very important as a mucolytic. It helps your body break up excessive mucus. Okay, so if you suffer with a lot of chronic sinus impaction uh, and a lot of mucus, cysteine can be very, very helpful for that. Cysteine, aside from that, aside from being effective for uh, colds, flus, uh, we've seen it be effective as an adjuvant for mucolytic processes. We know that cysteine also goes on to produce glutathione. And glutathione, many researchers refer to this as the master antioxidant. It's the primary antioxidant that helps preserve and protect your body from free radical damage. Again, B6 gets you there. It's really hard to get there if you can't get from homocysteine to cysteine and then subsequently glutathione. So the other thing cysteine helps to do is it helps down the pathway to producing bile acids, which are also important for detoxification. Remember, you use bile to bind toxins in the GI tract. You also use bile to help you digest and absorb fats, emulsify fats. So pretty important, pretty central role here for B6 as it relates to homocysteine, right? Again, homocysteine to cysteine to glutathione and bile acids, uh, very, very critical function. So. I say it goes deeper than just the homocysteine, but you can measure homocysteine. You can ask your doctor to measure this compound. If it's above nine, you want to consider asking or talking with your doctor about B6, B12, B2, and folate. And in my opinion, you could take all four of those really safely, right? It's very, very safe to take B vitamins. They're water soluble. There's really no toxicity uh, with B vitamins, at least none known. To, in great quantities. Vitamin B6 is one of the few. Um, there were some studies years ago that showed if you gave people 500 milligrams or more vitamin B6 over longer periods of time, you could create some neurological symptoms, some neuropathy in the hands and the feet. But that's a pretty rare occurrence. It's, it's 
actually quite rare and you have to be on mega doses for quite a long time for that to really start to show up. So it's not likely if you're using a B complex that you're going to run into a vitamin B6 toxicity issue. It's just not common and not likely. So really cheap, really inexpensive, but all the diseases this creates are very expensive and very problematic and very destructive. So very, very important that you understand this B vitamin, very important, very critical for maintaining the proper metabolize, uh, metabolism of that chemical. So, hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.